video, we're going to look back at Q consumer patterns and look at the different considerations for the different types. Previously, in part one of this series, we looked at the two different types of consumer patterns. The first is active standby, which is where you have an exclusive queue and multiple consumers bound to it. The first consumer to bind is the active consumer and is the only one to receive messages. All others that bind to that queue are in kind of a standby or backup state. The other consumer pattern we looked at is the competing consumer pattern. This is where we have a solace non-exclusive queue, multiple consumers bound to it, and the messages within that queue are load balanced or shared among those consumers. We also looked at the considerations for each of these, but in this video, we're gonna go into a bit more detail. So just to remind you, the active standby queue considerations we mentioned, consumer scaling, message spooling, duplicate messages, and looking at the active flow indication. For consumer scaling with an active standby or exclusive queue, what we're going to do is create multiple queues. To best use this, we're going to uh, break up the topics each queue is listening on, and then optionally bind multiple consumers in that active standby pattern to each of these queues. This means less messages will go into an individual queue, whereas if we only had one queue, it would be listening on a variety of topics and would have many more messages be uh, spooled onto it. The next consideration is looking at message spooling. You should be aware of the ingress message rate or the rate at which messages are being saved to the queue. Is the active consumer of that queue able to keep up with that ingress message rate. If not, you may want to look at the consumer scaling piece and break up what that queue is listening on. Another consideration is looking at duplicate messages. In this case, it actually applies to both an active standby or our competing consumer case. Think about uh, you have your active consumer and it receives and processes a message. Before it acknowledges that message, it actually crashes or disconnects from Solace. The previously standby consumer now becomes active, receives that exact same message, and is going to process it again, and hopefully this time we'll be able to send that acknowledgement back to the Solace instance to delete it from the queue. But note, because the first, the originally active instance received that message and did process it, uh, you will have duplication of processing. So to account for this, you may want some unique identifier in your message or some other way of identifying messages uniquely uh, so you can ensure you, you don't process duplicate messages. The next consideration for active standby queues is looking at this active flow indication piece. Uh, this is for when your active consumer disconnects and you want your previously standby consumer to be informed that they are now active. So here we have our active consumer disconnects and our standby or previously standby instance is informed that it is now active. This is something you can enable when using our Solace Enterprise APIs. So those are the main considerations when using an active standby queue with Solace, an, an exclusive queue with Solace. So let's now look at the competing consumers queue. Again, to touch on and summarize the different considerations. Again, consumer scaling, message ordering, duplicate messages, which we actually covered just previously. It's basically the same case. Uh, and this property, max delivered unact messages per flow. Let's look at each of these. When you're looking at a competing consumer and you want to scale up the number of consumers, it's pretty easy. You actually just bind another consumer to the very same queue and it will be included in the round robining of the messages from that queue. Message ordering. Uh, what could happen here is consumers may process messages at a different rate. 
Um, you could have maybe more CPU de uh, dedicated to one consumer than another. Uh, so the processing might be different uh, in terms of speed. Here we have a queue with three messages on it. The first message goes to that first top consumer, the second message to the bottom consumer. Uh, notice the messages are still on the queue. Again, we have not acknowledged those messages yet. We're still processing them. Maybe in this case, the second message on the second, the bottom consumer, is processed quite quickly. We acknowledge that second message. Third message comes down. We acknowledge the third message because that consumer has so much, so many more resources. And then finally, the first consumer is done. This is quite the extreme case here, but just to show you what could happen in terms of your message order uh, with a non-exclusive queue. So the next piece that we would want to look at is max delivered unact messages per flow. Uh, kind of a mouthful, I'm going to shorten it to max unact messages per flow. Um, this controls how many messages a consumer can have uh, from a queue before it needs to send an acknowledgement back. So for the first, the top example there, our max unact messages uh, is set to one, which basically means each consumer on that queue can have one message that they're processing that they have and have not acknowledged yet before they do need to send an act back. Once the queue receives an acknowledgement for that one message, it will send another to that consumer. The bottom example has max unact messages per flow set to three. Uh, so that means each of the consumers can have three messages that they are buffering or processing before they need to send an acknowledgement back to the queue. The default for this value is actually 10,000. So it's quite a bit larger than our examples here. Uh, but you can see how you can control that, uh, how many messages your consumer has at a really fine grain level. This property is a setting on the queue, um, so it would be a per queue setting rather than a per flow setting. So those are the considerations for a non-exclusive queue, uh, and those are just things to keep be aware of uh, so you set them appropriately so you get the behavior you want for your applications. Thanks for watching.